So here's our first example. Let the short run production function be q is equal to 72 l squared minus 0 0.8 l cubed. Find the value of labor which maximizes production. So here we're dealing with an optimization problem where we're trying to maximize production. So our production equation, q is equal to 72 l squared minus 0 0.8 l cubed is what we're trying to optimize by finding that maximum coordinate. To determine this coordinate, I'm going to use the process that we outlined in the previous set of videos. Step one, I'm going to determine the first derivative of our function. Q prime is equal to, now the first derivative of 72 L squared is 144 L, and the derivative of 0 0.8 L cubed becomes 2.4 L squared. Next, I'm going to set this first derivative to be equal to zero and solve for the L values. Now I'm going to factor this out. So I can factor out an L and I get 144 minus 2.4L. This is all going to be equal to zero. And so this is going to happen when either of these terms are equal to zero. So I have two solutions here. One is when L is equal to zero, the first derivative will be zero. Or alternatively, when 144 minus 2.4L is equal to zero, this can be solved for by moving 2.4 to the other side of the equation. I get 144 is equal to 2.4L. Divide both sides by 2.4. And I get L is equal to 60. So I have a critical point when L is equal to zero and when L is equal to 60. The next step is to determine the Q value associated with these L values. So I'm going to take my Q equation right here and I'm going to substitute L is equal to zero into it. So Q of zero is going to be equal to 72 times zero squared minus 0 0.8 times zero cubed. And what I get is zero. Now for when L is equal to 60, I have Q of 60 is equal to 72 times 60 squared minus 0 0.8 times 60 cubed. And this gives me 86,400. So now I have my two critical coordinates. One is at 0 comma 0 and the other is at 60 comma 86,400. Now I'm going to determine if these coordinates are maximums or minimums based on the second derivative test. So to start, I get the second derivative q double prime, and that is going to be equal to the derivative of my first derivative up here. So the derivative of 144L is 144, and the derivative of 2.4L squared becomes 4.8L. Next, I do my second derivative test by calculating the second derivative for our critical L values. So our L values of zero will be my first critical value. So Q double prime when L is equal to zero, I'm gonna get 144 minus 4.8 times zero. That's gonna give me 144. Now this second derivative of 144 is positive. It's greater than zero. So what we're looking at when we have a positive second derivative is a function that is concave up in that region. And so the critical point where that slope is zero is a minimum, a minimum. And we can also see that in that listing here when f double prime of x is greater than zero, we have a minimum. Now we're gonna repeat this process for when L is equal to 60, the other critical point. So the second derivative when L is equal to 60, we have 144 minus 4.8 times 60. This gives me negative 144. Now this value is less than zero. So when we're looking at this area of the function, what we're dealing with is something that is concave down. We're looking at the critical point where the slope is equal to zero. Thus, this critical point is going to be at a maximum because it's in the concave down region. And this is validated when we look at our table here, or our listing, I should say, when f 
double prime of x is negative, we're at a maximum. So with our second derivative test being conclusive, we don't need to go on to step six. We have determined our critical points. What we were interested in this problem is the maximum production. And that happens when L is equal to 60, as we can see down here. And the associated level of production is 86,400. So as our concluding set statement, we can say production is maximized when labor L is equal to 60. The associated maximum production level is, and we have that value right here, 86,400.